Hi, Anthony from Read to Lunch. In this video, we will go over how to fill in your location settings. In Read to Lunch, select Tools, Settings, Locations. The location list window displays all the locations for your business. Here, you'd have the option to create new locations by using the Add button, but we'll discuss that later. Let's go ahead and select Modify. On General, you will see Location ID. This is your internal organizational reference to the store. Business name, this is what your customers know your store's location to be. Facts, in a future release, this may change to mobile. You could put in the store's text fax number. Email is your store's email address. Password and confirm password fields are the database password that retail clients use to access the database. You may want to change this to a unique password and then change it yearly. Next, let's select Bill 2. This is where you'd fill in the billing information for your store. Next, let's select miscellaneous. In this section, I'll be making references to POs and TOs. PO stands for purchase orders, which are items purchased from vendors usually. And TOs stands for transfer orders, which if you are a multi-location business, is moving products from one store to another store. PO, TO, receive sort order. You have the options to sort by stock number alphabetically or to sort order by order of entry, line order. Select whichever method you would like the information to display. Inventory update POTO auto deletion mode. Ask before deleting POs and TOs after inventory update. This will display a prompt asking if you want to delete a completed PO or TO. Automatically delete POs and TOs after inventory update. This will delete completed POs and TOs after you perform the update function. Do not delete POs or TOs after inventory update. This will leave completed POs and TOs in your PO and TO list respectfully. I would recommend either having automatically delete POs and TOs after inventory update or ask for deleting POs and TOs after inventory update. Because as time progresses, and if you leave completed POs or TOs in the lists, it can be cumbersome scrolling through dozens if not hundreds of purchase orders and transfer orders. Don't worry though, if you delete POs or TOs, you have access to reporting to see what was ordered on those purchase orders or transfer orders. Inventory update, matrix parent pricing update mode. If you're not sure what a matrix is, please check out our video on it linked in the description below. With the update matrix parent pricing when receiving child item is selected, Retailage will update the matrix parent pricing with the price of the last child items that was received. Likewise, if you select do not update matrix parent child pricing when receiving a child item, the parent pricing will be retained as it was. Inventory, add prices to new items based on default margins. With add prices to new items based on default options selected, Retail Edge will automatically populate the pricing of your new inventory items based off the cost and department margin. If you do not want Retail Edge to do this, then select do not add prices to new items based on default margins. Inventory, manual price updating. Your selection here controls how the price fields behave when performing manual adjustments. When change only selected price value is selected, only that one field is adjusted. This is especially useful when using integrations such as Shopify, where you may be using different price fields and values. Copy new price to all values for selected location is useful if you are a multi-location business whose pricing may be different at different stores, but the price fields are the same at that store. Copy new price to all price values for all locations is useful if your pricing is consistent between all your locations if you are a multi-location business. Inventory, case ordering mode. Case mode, use case parents with min-max reordering. Case mode, use case parents with min-max reordering will allow you to, when you're using the auto generate PO function within Retail Edge, will use the case parents for that ordering. Item mode, reorder individual items, ignoring case relationships, will use the individual items instead of the case parents. Transfer order control mode. This is useful if you are a multi-location business. 
When TO control mode is set to none, any location has control over all the transfer orders for the organization. To control this, you can set it to controlled by originating and receiving locations. So that way, when you generate a transfer order, only the originating location and receiving location may modif make modifications to said transfer order. Likewise, centralized receiving mode allows you to set a central node to control who's ordering and who's receiving the transfer orders. With transfer orders, it's important to remember that while RetailEdge gives you great control over where you're controlling these functions from, sometimes restricting it may be best. Next, let's select QuickBooks. Here's where you would map your QuickBooks accounts for your RetailEdge closing reports. If you'd like more information about exporting to QuickBooks, please check our links in the description below. Next up is Receipt. This will be the information that will show at the top of your receipts when you print in Retail Edge, if selected in your workstation advanced receipt options. A tip from the sales team though, if you'd like your website to appear at the top of your receipt and you're not using the country field, then you can put your website in that space. Also. If the information here for the most part is the same as your billing address, then you can select copy billing address. Next up, let's select register. Default margin. While Retail Edge tracks margin on a per item basis, based on cost and selling price, and department SKU items use the margin that you enter when you're creating departments, this would be the default margin used for non-entered items in Retail Edge. Default minimum layaway. This would be the deposit percentage you require for layaways. If no deposit is required, then you can enter in zero. Default minimum open order. Likewise, this is the percentage you could require on open orders. Likewise, if you want your open orders to require no deposit, you can put zero. Edit quick list settings. You can use this to customize the quick list buttons on the sales screen. If you'd like more information about how to use this feature, please check out our video on editing the quick list. Copy quick list settings from other locations. If your business has multiple locations and you wanted to copy the quick list from one location to another, you can use this button to do so. Likewise, the copy payout list settings from other location allows you to copy the payout list from another location and you can use this button to do so. Next, sales, enable automatic rounding. If you select this toggle, you can turn on automatic rounding feature in Retail Edge. This enables our Canadian and other countries users that no longer have penny currency to round the sales off. Before enabling this feature, please check with your local tax finance authorities about the rules and co compliance requirements. Round to the nearest, this is the denomination that retailers will round to with automatic rounding enabled. Cash only, ignore other payment types. This enables compliance with certain regions where due to of the lack of a penny currency, only cash is required to be rounded out, but credit, debit, check, and such do not require rounding. All right, so let's go ahead and check out sales tax. Edit default sales tax jurisdictions is where you would apply sales tax that you've created. On the left hand side are your available tax jurisdictions and on the right hand side are the ones currently applied for your location. This allows you if you're in a region that has tax holidays and such to disable and activate taxes accordingly. The toggle for make new items and non entity items taxable by default is where you can control the behavior of when you're creating new items or when you're loading non entity items into a sales screen. I would recommend selecting this if the majority of your items would be taxable by default, but if the opposite is true, then make sure it's unselected. Sales tax mode. You have two options. If you're not sure which applies in your region, I would highly recommend checking with your local tax authorities to see which applies to your business. Traditional sales tax mode. This is where sales tax is applied, but not included in the individual item pricing. This is very common in the United States, 
for state, county, and local taxes. That mode is where sales tax is included in the individual items pricing. This is common in the Caribbean, EU, Asia, Africa, and South America. Once again, if you're not sure which tax structure you need for your business, please check with your local tax authorities. Sales tax rounding options. There are two options. Once again, if you're not sure which applies in your region, I would highly recommend checking with your local tax authorities on which applies to your business. Normal rounding uses traditional rounding rules where four and less rounds down and five and greater rounds up. In the example of fractional sales, 1.123 would round to 1.12. All items round up would take fractional sales and round them up. So in the example of 1.123, it would become 1.13. Next, let's select security. In the description below, I'm including links to our YouTube series on security. I highly recommend checking those videos out before making any changes here. And here's a quick overview. Under general security options, you have two toggles. By default, neither is selected. If you enable track clerk IDs, read to ledge will now prompt on the sales screen for a clerk ID. This allows you to run reports for clerk based sales for performance and or commissions. You would need to set up your clerk list. If you turn security on, this will now restrict access to areas of retail edge based upon the action list. Speaking of the action list, there is the edit action list button. Here's where you would select the action list levels to allow or prevent your clerks from accessing different areas of retail edge. But once again, I would recommend checking out our series on security. Also listed here is credit card storage options. This is deprecated and no longer used in retail edge. Lastly, let's select ship to. If your shipping address is different than your billing address, then you can fill that information here. If it is the same, then you can use the copy billing address button here. But there we have it, an overview of the location settings and retail edge. If you like the content we're putting up, hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, hit that as well. If you'd like to find out more information about us, please visit us at retailedge.com. Have a great day.